And now for a video I was not expecting to make at all. <laughs> Check this out. I put my 280 amp battery on this power supply. To, I put it to charge yesterday late in the afternoon and I came out to work out and I find that it's stalled in the charge process. And then I go look at the BMS and I see that it's actually drawing a little over an amp and then into two amps and then back and forth. All that to say that it will charge to full capacity at some point in time if I leave it this way. But the reason I bought this power supply to begin with is because I can turn up the voltage so that the current also drives harder so that I can charge this thing at a reasonable rate instead of in you know a week, maybe a day. Part of the deal is that I have to keep track of the draw on the power supply and on the BMS as it's charging. And once it hits that, that balance point, I need to turn up the voltage so that the current is able to push into those cells. The cells are rated for 1C charging. What does 1C mean? It means that if the capacity of the cell is 100 amp hours, it's capable of charging at 100 amp hours. Now that's foolish, okay? You don't wanna charge that hard. You don't wanna charge that fast. But at the same time, I don't wanna take a week to charge my battery. As you can see, now that I've turned up the DC voltage over there, my current meter is showing close to 45 amps on here. And if we go back to the BMS, we see that the BMS is showing 41 amps. That means that when I get done with work today, I'll come back out here. It'll probably be back down into the single digits and I'll have to turn up the voltage again to get it coaxed into a faster charging rate. I really wasn't expecting to make another video about this, but then it dawned on me that if this is the problem I'm having and I showed you how to make a battery and then I don't tell you how to go about charging it, you're gonna also have some frustration about it. So let me save you the frustration. Part of the setup is that you also have to be careful how you start the charge. When the battery was fully depleted, it was reading 10.1 volts, I think, if I remember right, it might've been 10.2. Since the battery is rated for charging at 1C, it will take any inrush of current that you give it all the way to 1C. The BMS controls that, but the BMS is also rated for 300 amp hour. Therefore, it'll also allow 300 amps of DC voltage to come through with no problem. And if you do that, what you're gonna have is your power supply is gonna go into mommy help me mode and it's gonna self shut down. You're gonna try to figure out why. Now, one of the things about this power supply and a couple others that I've tried with that are MFJ, I haven't tried anything else, those are the ones I have, is that if I connect the battery to the power supply and the power supply goes into self-preservation mode because the battery decided to draw more amperage than the power supply is wanting to supply, the power supply will still show power on it because the battery is actually running the, the guts of the power supply. If you need to pay attention to the BMS to make sure that you're actually charging and that the battery is not actually just powering the power supply electronics for the process. With that said, when I first plugged in the battery into the power supply, I had the DC voltage knob turned all the way down because I knew that if I didn't do that, the power supply would go into self-preservation mode. And basically it's a game of turn it up a little bit, wait for the BMS to catch up and realize, oh, there's current here, I can start charging. And once it starts seeing current, turn it up slowly until the BMS for the battery sees that there's enough current there to keep on charging at a higher rate, at a higher and higher rate. But if you go straight into the standard voltage of the power supply at 13.8 volts, the power supply itself is gonna go straight into self-protection mode. No two ways about it. When you're charging a big battery like this, start low on the voltage, let the battery get a few amps in it, then start turning it up slowly, slowly, slowly until you get to the charging rate that you want. In this case, this power supply is rated for 47 amps, I think. Total. The model number is 4245, which I infer is actually a 45 amp power supply. I can probably look up the specs, but I don't want to drive it at 45 amps. I want to give it a little bit of breathing room. So 40 amps is good enough for me. If you have a bigger power supply, you can crank it up some more. If you have a smaller power supply, turn it down a bit. In any case, that's how I go about charging this battery. Be mindful in the initial setup, 
Remember that you also have to babysit it a little bit as it charges, otherwise the charging is going to go into a trickle mode because there's not enough voltage for the current to get through into the cells. And then keep an eye on it. On a battery like this, I don't want to get it any more than about, oh, 80, 85% on the charge. Do I want to have 280 amp hours with me? Absolutely. Do I need to? Not always. I'm lengthening the life of the cells by only charging roughly to 80% and only discharging roughly to 10%. No, that doesn't give me the whole gamut of the battery, but it lets me have the battery for quite a few more cycles. That's all I got on this one. I wasn't expecting to make it. Uh, now you know the, that there's a little bit of method behind the madness. We'll catch you guys on the next one, 7-3.